Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Hebrews chapter 7 verse 12, Genesis chapter 3 verse 11, and Acts chapter 4 verse 8. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Father God for this word. Thank you for helping us as we study your word, giving us revelation in our hearts through your Holy Spirit. Help us to know how to apply this word to ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 12. For when there is a change in the priesthood, there is necessarily a change in the law as well. All right, and so this is speaking of the Levitical priesthood and how um, because Christ was a high priest, but he was not um, a high priest in the same way that um, the Levitical priesthood were priests. Remember, they were priests because of their bloodline, right? And so um, now Christ was the high priest of high priests, and he was a high priest not because of his bloodline, because he was in the tribe of Judah, but because God had appointed him to be a high priest forever. The Levitical priesthood only occupied a priesthood that was while they were on earth and while they were living. Um, and so it says, for when there is a change in the priesthood, there's necessarily a change in the law as well. So anything that you do as it relates to the priesthood, priesthood if there is a change um, to something then you are changing the law right and so um the the priesthood um the priesthood was established by the law itself and so as the as they are a part of the priesthood it is because the law has dictated that they be a part of the priesthood that they are the ones who um are the priests right and so if there's any changes in that there's also going to be a change in the law as well right because what you're doing is you're breaking something that is set in stone so if you're breaking that then you're changing the law right you're changing something completely right and so um that is the disbanding of the old covenant that is the, the breaking apart of that old covenant it has been fulfilled and now there is a new covenant right and so um that is now through Christ Jesus Christ Jesus is a high priest of high priests um this is the ministry that he is in in charge of in the heavenly realm he is our high priest and and we have come under that covering that covenant right that old one is done um and this new one has come all right and we are under the covering of christ jesus that is the, the change that has taken place in the levitical priesthood and so um it, it has been disbanded it has been broken up and so um the second verse that the Lord gave me was Genesis chapter 3, verse 11. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? All right. And so this is, um, of course, Adam in the garden. And it is speaking of um, imagery of, of trying to go back to the thing that God has set in stone that no that's not right right this is the law this is this is um disobeying the law being under the law and disobeying the law what was the law don't eat of the tree right that was the law and so um Christ has saved us from that law right but there was a covering back then of that law um, but Adam came out from under the covering, right? He had a way that he was going to be saved, a way that he was going to be covered. But because he came out from under it, he became uncovered. And the only thing that could, could cover him is animal skin at that point. So that old law was disbanded, right? It was, it was um, done away with. 
right? So he made a change. And so because of that change, it changed everything, right? He, there was a change in the law. No longer, they no longer had access to that tree, right? They no longer were under those old rules, those old statutes of Eden. Now that that old way was gone, it was passed away and now they needed covering, right? And so that was where the, the new law um, was going to take on from that point point on right of course the law didn't come until a lot later but um here this is where um the end of that old covenant that old way of doing things um started right there was a change that had occurred all right and so um when that change occurred the old law um was was done away with that old way of living that old covenant between God and Adam um of him being in the garden being carefree and doing all those things just relaxing in the garden that old way had been um broken up all right and so the third verse that the Lord gave me was Acts chapter 4 verse 18 so they called them and charged them not to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. All right. And so this is the persecution of Peter and John after they had healed the person at the gate called beautiful. Um, they were persecuted, right? They were, um, told to give an account of why they were, whose name they were preaching in, in front of these leaders. And, um, because they were preaching in the name of Jesus, they actually had to, um, they actually, um, were charged, um, with not speaking in that name, right? And so, um, they had to make a choice, right? They had to decide if they were going to stay with the old law, with the law that had been created of, hey, don't speak, don't act, don't do, right? Um, don't accept Jesus, don't be under that covering, or to stay under the covering that they had been under, which was Christ Jesus, walking away from that old disbanded way of the law. And so um, it had not been disbanded, excuse me, it had not been disbanded at that point because they were still doing animal sacrifice. But since then, it has been disbanded. Remember, he said it's perishing, it's going away, it's, disapp it's about to disappear. And so remember later that temple was taken away and there still is no more animal sacrifice there. And so it says they call them and charge them not to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. So here they are, are having to decide whether to come out from the covering or um, to stay with Christ under this new covenant, this new way. Right. And so um, this is foreshadowing of the tribulation that is soon to come. Right. Because there's going to be um, a world where you're not allowed to to preach and teach and talk about the name of Jesus. You are to swear allegiance to that Antichrist and his prophet and, um, it, that is soon to come. Right. And so it says, so they call them and charge them not to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. And here, Peter and John, their response was that, you know, that it's it, that's for you to decide whether or not you're going to do what you're going to do. But I'm going to do what I've been doing. Right. They they didn't listen to that charge because they knew they had to answer to God, a charge to keep I have, right? Um, and so they they decided to stick with what they had been doing, right? Even under harsh persecution. They could have been stoned, right? But but they didn't do it. The priesthood at that time um didn't do it because in the um, those who were in charge because there were so many people who had been converted by this healing and uh, over 5,000 and they knew that the people would not you know possibly have that right at that moment so they chose and they couldn't deny um, the power of God that had taken place either and so because this man was completely healed and so 
It says they called them and charged them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. And so that is going to be the choice um, to accept Jesus or accept um, that um, way that the Antichrist is going to present. Remember, this is that foreshadowing of that. And so there's going to be great persecution, but um, the people are going to have to make that decision to stay under the covering um, that the death of Christ has provided. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for showing us how to rightly divide your word, have understanding, and then also have revelation of what it means to us, God. We love you. We praise you. We ask you to help us as we navigate the law through your Holy Spirit, knowing your standards only through your Holy Spirit. Help us to be guided by Holy Spirit, Lord God. Help us to see clearly, Lord Jesus. Help us to not come from under this covering, Lord God. Your whole word is useful, Lord Jesus, but we know that you want us to be free from following the law and come under this grace covering. We love you. We praise you. We thank you for the times that we were born into now that we have this great grace. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you prayed that prayer and you believe that prayer, Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth. And he's going to do just that. Amen. One of the things that Christ wanted us to do and not forsake was the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Go out, find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God, as well as go out and tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. Amen. Also, don't forget to um, be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed.